Welcome to Bloombox Growing Deeper. I'm Sarah. I'm Hannah. And we're on a mission to help you become the gardener you want to be. Hi, everybody. Hello, we're here. We're here to talk about our favorite summer topic. Weeds. They're Mm. everywhere. Not the kind of weed you're thinking of. (laughs) (laughs) Although that's been everywhere in Nebraska news recently. Let me tell you. I I told her she had to make that joke to start with. Um, I did. Just get it over with. I can't help myself. (laughs) Uh, Okay, so we're going to go through some of um, the weeds that we struggle with in our yard. Some of the weeds we don't care to struggle with in our yard. And maybe a little bit about how we uh, manage or don't manage our time weeding, because this is a rabbit hole. It um, is. I've I've definitely watched my husband go after dandelions in the lawn, and he'll say, I'm just going to do this for a couple minutes, yeah. and then uh, we have to tell him it's time to be done. Do you want to hear my new favorite weed story? Yeah. Okay. So my mom was helping with somebody's yard to get it kind of cleaned up. Um, Somebody needed a little bit of assistance on it. And they had some dandelions. So she pulled up all of the dandelions. There's like, there were some big bunches of dandelions in there. And then she came to me and she said, well, what should I put there instead? Because they didn't want to put grass down because grass was like, that was part of the problem is they didn't have, they weren't able to mow. And so she said, what can we put here? That'll be like low growing. And I was like, well, I would have left the dandelions. <laughs> I don't know. But she does like dandelions. So she came over to my house after I pulled weeds. And to me, that meant pulling up some wild strawberry. And she planted that in that spot. So she just switched one weed for the other, but it's all about preference, people. I love it. (laughs) Also, um, I love that the part you left out of the story was that this was a family in need that your mom was helping out. And she took into account their um, ability to care for the yard when she did the work, because that is so important. Um, You know, I see people wanting to plant for their elderly neighbors or parents and that's wonderful. I want you to do that. But I love that she took into account their capability for caring for the yard and repurposed the plant you didn't want. Yes. Yeah. We made it all work. I think I gave her like a full five gallon, more wild strawberry than she could have ever needed. (laughs) Which, you know what? Uh, This wasn't where I planned to start, but we're going to start here with the definition of a weed. Okay. Um, Because I think that story is a great illustration of the fact that most of the things that we call weeds are just the wrong plant in the wrong place. There's not actually a problem with wild strawberries. There's nothing wrong with them. Right. And I do leave wild strawberry in my lawn because I like it there and then I don't have to mow. Right. But I pull it other places. Where it's encroaching into other plants that you want instead. And that's really, that's what a weed is. It's a plant that's growing where we don't want it or that's maybe causing us problems growing the plants that we do want. There's other than that, there's nothing intrinsically wrong with a dandelion. Um, they're a great food plant for us and bees. But um, if you're trying to establish a nice green lawn, they'll be a problem for you. There is a difference between weeds and invasive plants. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and there is noxious weeds. And as there's well. noxious weeds, yes. Um, and that's not what we're really talking about when we say, you know, just your average weed. It's just a plant that's not where we want it to be. An invasive, an invasive, <laughs> an invasive or nauseous weed is actually causing real problems in the ecosystem. It needs to go whether you like it or not, mm-hmm. unfortunately. Yeah. Honeysuckle. Yeah. For instance. Well, the... So- some honeysuckle yeah. yes i uh, sorry i should be clear because i did have to cut out some recently i oh, was like yeah. how'd you get here <laughs> right uh and there's actually you know there's there's a council that determines weeds that are invasive and nauseous um and by law if a weed is nauseous you have to manage it you can get in trouble for not because it causes you know actually huge ecological and um economical problems for the area other than that you know it's just kind of up to you what you like and don't like Mm -hmm. 
Yes. And I think part of this conversation comes because I did take three days off last week to weed. That's all I did. That's not all I did, but I, for, <laughs> I hope it's not all you did. It was hours a day. Yeah. Like hours and hours, partly because I needed to weed in my garden beds and it had gotten so out of control that like I was pulling back like a, a stem by stem my past flowers, and, like pulling oh out goodness. one little weed <laughs> just to try to get it. So it took a while, but also I just really needed my front. Um, what we affectionately call the hell strip yeah. to be back in order. Mm-hmm. It ne- <laughs> Sometimes you just need a reset. <laughs> yes. And that's what I had to do. I hope you had a good audiobook or podcast I did. to listen to. I got through an audiobook that was 15 hours long. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I filled three lawn bags with weeds. Oh, my goodness. Because I didn't want to put them in the compost. Right. Which we can also. We'll get yeah, to that, we'll too. To what that. do we do with our weeds mm-hmm. after we pull them? I'm not a good example. <laughs> um, okay. Let's, you know, let's start there. How yeah. do we, um, you know, handle our time with weeding? Because you could you could really weed forever mm-hmm. if you did not give yourself a stopping point. So you needed to do some heavy cleanup. Yes. Because I didn't do anything all spring. Gotcha. Between work and grad school. Well, nothing yeah, was it's happening. Hard to blame you there. <laughs> um, and I actually weeded really well during the spring. Um, I love to weed during the spring. Those nice, cool mornings. Mm-hmm. I can go out. I can let my kid play outside. We can eat breakfast and pull some weeds, and it's great. And then it gets hot. Mm-hmm. And I stop. Muggy. Muggy. That's the worst. Mm-hmm. I can be hot. I don't mind being hot. But, um, Today, after we just had flooding rains last night, I said, no, thank you. To Even though they would pop right out of the ground, yeah. <laughs> I did not want to be out there in the muggy weather. Uh, I don't actually know if my yard's in much better shape than yours. We're dealing with some long-term seed bank yeah. building. Uh, this is our third summer in our house, and the people who owned it for eight years before us were not big on gardening, so... It kind of doesn't matter. I can keep pulling weeds as much as I want. And uh, we are winning the battle on, <laughs> on some fronts and we're losing the battle on some so, fronts. When I was walking upstairs to the to the shower last week, I was like, did I win the battle or the war? I'm not <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm losing the war, but I'm winning battles. Mm, yeah. I mean, you know what? Maybe the war is neutral. Mm, yeah. The weeds aren't <laughs> increasing. Well, there you I go. will say that. And I've I've definitely uh, made a difference in some species, but there's some that are just like hanging on for dear life. Mm-hmm. So what was when you were weeding for three days, 15 hours? Yes. <laughs> That's a long That's time. That's so much weeding. <laughs> I was like, it's insane. Uh, how, was there anything that stood out as like, I see a lot of this or was it a big variety? It depends on where I was in my garden. Okay. Because first and foremost, I had to get all the crabgrass yeah, out of my vegetable beds. Mm-hmm. That just had to happen. And then the creeping Charlie yeah. that I, I have surrendered some land to. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to keep it out of, especially my blue box garden, right. or it'll just strangle everything yeah. out. But the biggest thing I was battling in my front like that hell strip area was um, honestly clover, okay. which I leave in a lot of places, but it had overrun my plants. Like all the plants I put in there, I ended up replacing about oh, wow. half of them. Yeah. So clover and dandelions, which I also leave in a lot of places, but they, they had to go there. And I, I didn't get to the dandelions as quickly as I would have liked. Yes. And now I'm really worried about the seed bank for next yeah. year. But those were the two. And I did feel bad because my neighbor across the street has bumblebee, uh, honeybees. And so um, I they were coming over to drink from the clover. <laughs> And I'm just yanking it out. And I was like, sorry, little bees. Like, you can find it elsewhere. I have it in other parts of my garden. So. Yeah. Uh, That is. So with your yard, you've got the hell strip in the front is very sunny and hot. Mm -hmm, Because we had to have the tree removed. Right. So it is hot and sunny. I 
planted a new plant and it already died. Oh no. I know. But but you know, it was very hot on Monday. It was so hot. Didn't matter how Monday much I was watered. the fourth of July. Yeah, yeah. We're recording Friday after the fourth of July. Mm-hmm. So that was a hot day. It was. And then you your f- rest of your front yard is still moderately shady. No, it's pretty it's much pretty full much. sun. Okay. Except for the late, like late afternoon because okay. the house blocks. It. Gotcha. I haven't yeah. been there since your tree came out. Yeah. So very fun- sunny front yard. Mm-hmm. And then your backyard, you've got some really dense shady spots, mm-hmm. but then you've got some pretty sunny spots. Yeah. Some that get some good morning and afternoon sun. Okay. Everything gets shaded at some point in the day, so I wouldn't call it any part of it full sun but enough sun that like vegetables do fine and there's and there's some good like my mountain mint is good and that needs full sun yeah so because that matters with the type of weeds Mm -hmm. that you're getting because you're well and the fact that you live in lincoln and i live in wahoo a smaller town um we have very different weed problems Mm -hmm. so you've got henbit or no, I've got hen bit. You've got creeping Charlie. I have creeping Charlie. I'll keep my hen bit. <laughs> <laughs> creeping Charlie's a beast. Yeah. And I hear a lot of people in Lincoln struggle with uh-huh. it. Um, yeah. Clover is a tough one because, you know, if you're a pollinator gardener, it kind of hurts to pull that up. Yeah. But we also are responsible for the diversity of our yard mm-hmm. and keeping some of those other plants alive. Yeah. And I couldn't get it to pull up well enough that I could transplant (laughs) like I did consider it (laughs) like I have where that tree came out yeah it's just a big bare spot now and I don't want to put in just grass grass Mm -hmm. it won't do well and I'd rather put like clover or something yeah and I'm thinking what a like I am gonna have to buy clover seed (laughs) but after I pulled it up over here (laughs) it's not expensive (laughs) no it's not but I'm just like (laughs) Why? Yes, I'm, I'm pulling it. it here and buying it. Yeah, here. yeah. Yep. That's which is the same with some some of our wild strawberries. Some yeah. people do purchase that, and I'm like, come to my yard, just dig a square foot spot, you'll get it. I remember one time a former board member bought two full flats of it at Spring Affair. Mm-hmm. I was an intern. I remember loading it in her car. Like, where are you putting this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's your front yard. Yeah. Sorry. What? What um, weeds were you seeing in the back? You said crabgrass in your vegetables. I think that's crabgrass and creepy and Charlie. And then I have this vine. Oh yes, that we just we we researched prior to this. We've identified, and it, it is insidious, <laughs> and it just pops right up, and all of a sudden is six feet long. Like ah. it's just it grows so quickly, and you have to get it before it flowers. Or gets these like orange spore thingies on on the vine itself, um, and you don't want to touch it with bare hands. Once it does that, um, it has made me get a bit of a rash before when I've done that. Well, we identified it. Yes, and it is Cynanchum lave. Don't know what that I means. just know it by that. Yeah. So here's Damn the. Weed. <laughs> <laughs> the common names are sand vine, climbing milkweed, blue vine, honey vine, and angel pod. Sure. It came with a warning that it could be, uh, you know. Irritating, irritating to the skin. To the skin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thanks. I couldn't yeah. figure out what, and what it, I was trying to say. If you let it go all the way through its cycle, it does get these big pods mm-hmm. on it. So you definitely want to get it before yes. then. It is in the Asclepidaceae family. The same family that milkweeds are in, it is not in the genus Asclepius. So um, it's not the same thing as when you plant your swamp milkweed or your showy milkweed. Right. Um, but it's in that family. Mm-hmm. And it does have a list here that says beloved by bees, butterflies, and other insects for its nectar. And it is. They're all over it. But you know what? So they're all over. All of my other plants, too, so they can have that. (laughs) And when when we were Googling this to identify it, one article that popped up was called The Vine That Ate the South, Yeah, (laughs) which is a great description of this weed. So it can be, you know, it can be hard to say everything, you know, has a benefit somewhere. Mm -hmm. Just because this plant's beloved by bees does not mean it's beloved by Hannah. No. I need it to be gone, mostly because it will choke out my other plants, because it will climb anything 
that's taller than it. Right. So not just my fence, but um, any plant. Like I have to carefully pull it off my Joe pie. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. it's a nice tall yep. climber for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It it's a beast. And you said it's all over your whole neighborhood. Yes, I see it everywhere. In fact, when I walk the dog, I pull it for other people. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> so I hope they don't <laughs> like it or something. I don't know. I have been known to just walk by and start pulling. Because it it does come up very easily if yeah. you catch it. Right. Like when it's short. You can just yank roots and all right out. But it comes back. And that matters in our struggle with weeds. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, our yards aren't in isolation. We're part of neighborhoods. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, a lot of our weed pressure comes from the fact that our next door neighbors, um, we actually, we just never really see them outside. Yeah, They had to have a lawn company come mow their yard with a weed whacker last mm-hmm. week. Um, they're trying to sell their house if anyone's interested. <laughs> uh, but you could start fresh with the yard. Start fresh. <laughs> we'll help you kill it. There you um, go. And so it's all, I don't think there's any actual turf grass left in this yard. It's just all weeds. And they come through our fence and they seed themselves over the fence. And so in that area, I have to take a very open approach to weeding and just keep stuff from killing my plants. Mm-hmm. And I'm just really hoping that the next homeowner uh, d- has a different approach to y- lawn care. Yeah, we have that issue too. The neighbor behind us who I just, there's the, f- our fence, the back, uh, like their backyard and our backyard yeah. back up to each other. And the fence is right behind a garage, like a giant oh. garage because they were car folks. And so there's maybe like two feet between. So they've it's they just, just become yeah. jungle it's probably a, yeah one a place that everybody forgets about right they can't see it mm-hmm. yeah yeah mm-hmm. yeah and to be honest this year i have decided that that's the battle i will lose mm-hmm. is my whole back there i just don't have time right and you can only do so much mm-hmm. in an area that you know you share with another property owner that does things differently yeah, um, it is their fence as well. And I'm a little worried that if I keep pulling the fence, it's just going to fall over. <laughs> it needs a little bit of work. They may or may not replace. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, it is interesting sometimes when you look at a neighborhood and you can see different people have different weed problems. But then there's usually that one weed that's covering the whole neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, and for us in our neighborhood, that's bed straw. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. We're, and we're winning the battle with it. All right. It's still coming up in our yard. I'm going to have to look up a picture of bed straw okay. real quick. We'll share but, a picture. Yeah. It's that one that's like Velcro-y. Oh, yeah. Like the leaves would stick to your yes. clothing, which makes it... Um, even harder. I really dislike the feeling of it on my hands, even though it's not like pokey. It won't... It uh-huh. doesn't make you bleed, but it oh, just yeah. like feels icky. I have this. Mm-hmm. Yes. I didn't know that's what it was called. It's super easy to pull. Very easy. Yeah. Maybe I'm calling it by the wrong name, too. We'll check that. They have it um, as cleavers. That sounds... I've heard that name. So... Yeah. But, uh, Which it cleaves to everything. Yeah. But, uh, you know, most weeds yeah. have multiple names. Right. It is... We are winning that, though. Mm-hmm. It's not gone from our yard, but it's no longer, like, blanketing areas. That's good. Yeah. Uh, so, in, in my yard, I like to take the approach of little bits of work at a time and i think the way our gardens are designed works well we have very specific areas Mm -hmm. and so i try to be like today i'm doing that area right and if i'm a very distractible person i do not uh keep my concentration on one task well so i work very hard to keep my eyes only on the section i chose because otherwise I'll just wander around the yard pulling random weeds and feel like I made no progress at the end. Where if I clean up an area today and two days later I clean up a different area, I could see yeah. <laughs> something happening. Right. It's like vacuuming a very dirty floor. Yes. Like it's satisfying. <laughs> it is so satisfying. Um, and I don't take quite the like, I don't have to leave an area clean. I go for the... The common problems, you know, the problems I've been fighting for years, like that bed straw. 
And the things that are going to damage my plants, like for me, it's bindweed. I don't mm-hmm. have this um, vine of death that you have, <laughs> but I, I have bindweed everywhere. And um, dayflower, that mm-hmm. weird little, it's kind of like a weird branchy plant with blue flowers. Yeah. Um, and it just, it can sprout from the tiniest bit of anything left. I do feel like we're winning that battle too. That's good. Yeah. I think it can, it keeps re-sprouting, but we're making it work for its life. Yeah. So you go section by section Mm -hmm. and do you set a time? Like I'm going to work for 20 minutes. Well, my time is not my own. Right. (laughs) It's whatever (laughs) Silas will allow. Yes. Yes. I... I try to, you know, set up whatever activity he's doing. It's getting better. He's yeah. he's more yeah. interested in playing on his own in the yard yeah. and finding something he's to do. Getting older. He's mm-hmm. getting older. Um, we just got a kiddie pool this weekend. Oh, That's yeah. buying me a lot of time. <laughs> uh, so it's not, I'm not really in control of my own time and that can be frustrating. Mm-hmm. I like to finish a job before I can walk away. Yeah. Um, I really like to check it off my checklist mm-hmm. and I can't until I decided it's done. And I've had to give up that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also, it's okay. Yeah. My yard is never going to be weed free. I don't actually oh, no. care for it to be because, like you said, I want some clover and some dandelions for mm-hmm. the bees. Uh, so I just want to make sure my plants can keep living and keep taking up more space so that there's yeah. less space for the weeds. Yes. Yeah, I have a similar philosophy. Um, part of it too is in my front yard. Mm-hmm. I want to keep the garden beds clean. Yes. So that that way it communicates to my neighbors that these weeds are intentional. Yeah. Oh, that's and a these good. are garden beds. Like I like good. that. Yeah. Um, because like I said, I have clover in some parts, but I weed it in other parts. Like I'm telling you, in I was literally rolling the clover like carpet that oh I was goodness. cleaning, like just pulling it up. It was so <laughs> thick. Um, so that's another thing that I do. So I tend to focus in the front mm-hmm. sometimes a little bit more, especially since there are two new beds. Yeah. So I know if I want to keep them clean, I need to do it now so that as they grow. Like my bloom box garden that's been there for five years now, I don't have to really weed. Right. I mean, a little bit, but... Not much. That's my goal whenever we put in a new garden Mm -hmm. is that I'm only like giving it that hours of attention for the first year or two. And I've won in two spots so far. Yeah. Now I just have to go through and pull the occasional tree seedling Mm -hmm. because we've got a maple tree. Oh, yeah. Don't even get me started (laughs) on the tree. We haven't even talked about that. No, we'll we'll save that for later. Yeah, I try to establish my gardens with the purpose of covering the ground as tight as I can mm-hmm. so that mm-hmm. they're not my problem later. Yes. I spend most of my time in the backyard because that's where it's safe to let little people play while I right. work. And also that's where we've established our garden beds. Mm-hmm. We started in the back. Yeah. Because um, our front yard was just kind of, our front yard's the place that needs some work. And we knew we wanted to get some trees planted and so we didn't want to spend a whole lot of time establishing gardens until we decided where the trees were going. Right. But it's coming. Uh, in the spring, we're going to focus on this rock area. There's. Oh, I've heard about you've this heard about rock this. area. I need to take a picture. <laughs> so our whole yard was beautifully landscaped mm-hmm. by in like 1994 yeah. by the owners at that time who were avid gardeners. We've heard from other elderly neighbors that these people were like great gardeners. They left this one square of rock in between the driveway and the front walk up to our door. So like landscape rock or? It's river rock. River rock. Okay. It is exactly a square. I have the designs. Lana Haas did the design. Oh, wow. I have it. They, they saved it for us. That's so cool. It's really neat. I kind of <laughs> love that. I want to leave that for whoever inherits mm-hmm. our house next. And that square is marked homeowner cannot work here. And we don't know what that means. <laughs> we don't know if they didn't want to work there, mm-hmm. if um, they ran out of budget and, yeah. and chose that as the area to like leave. Like how big of a square? Um, like, I'm really bad at this. Yeah. 10 by 10? Okay, so a big spot. Big, yeah. yeah. Is there, you know, Wahoos full of cisterns? 
We actually, oh, yeah? when we were looking for a house, I accidentally opened one. Oh. And our, our realtor about had a heart attack. Because <laughs> those are supposed to be welded shut. Do you and think filled. there's a dead body there? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I know that, that a, a pet friend was buried in our backyard. Yeah. We left the marker there, so oh, we that's know where nice. it is. Yeah. Also, I don't want to dig up they will, yeah. pet friend. No. <laughs> we don't know. So we're just going to go for it and hope we don't dig up nuclear waste or something yeah uh but it's or maybe you'll find something super cool we could Mm -hmm. i mean who knows i want to turn down some buried treasure right uh but it's got to go i hate river rock it is the only place i have to consistently spray weeds because i don't even know how to weed it yeah um it is full full of bindweed and Mm -hmm. mare's tail Mm -hmm. and uh i don't even know this fox tail grass and then how deep is the rock it's like an inch a couple inches like one layer of rock it's like two or three layers okay. it's not gonna be bad okay. i've dug out worse mm-hmm. uh, for anybody thinking about putting down river rock i just want you to stop right now and think about what happens if you don't want it we're gonna because... talk about this in my garden fails okay <laughs> i have removed river rock actually i'll tell this story Can my I... dad for two summers, mm-hmm. paid us ten cents a wheelbarrow to remove river rock. You should from have our negotiated house. a higher rate. <laughs> well, I was <laughs> like twelve, uh, and I, there was enough wheelbarrows. We made some decent pool snack oh money. Oh my goodness! We our whole house had been river rocked, and it was just like uh, radiating heat mm-hmm. into the front of our house. And uh, he wanted it gone. He seeded it to grass and put some landscape plants in. Totally changed. We could sit on the front porch again. Oh, yeah. Uh, so just just stop I before mean, you dump the rock and think about what happens when you have to remove it. And my advice is if you're thinking, but I'm putting in a rock garden, um, research that because that's yeah. not what a rock garden right, is. Right. That's not a rock garden. <laughs> There is a lot more that goes into a rock garden. I'll get off my tangent yeah, yeah, about yeah. River Rock. No, but, I learned that the hard way, too. Yeah. Mm. But um, that's the only area in my yard that I consistently have to spray for weeds because mm-hmm. it's impossible to, like, truly pull them um, and keep them under control. I just keep covering it in flower pots. Like, those yeah, half-barrel sure. everything we found. There's a, you know, an old wash tub from my in-laws' yeah. house. There's a cream can that we found in the garage. Anything <laughs> that will cover ground. And I can fill with plants yep. to try to eat up space. You've made a little display. I have. I like of, it. You know, pots surrounded by bindweed. Yeah. But that is my... <laughs> I've actually been trying to get out there to spray those weeds for like three days now, but it keeps raining. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't going to spray when it was 104. No. Because that's not a good plan. Right. We talked about we that. We talked about that. <laughs> mm-hmm. So that's kind of my... That's why our front yard looks interesting. Mm-hmm. And our back... If, Everybody probably drives by and is like, what's wrong with these people? And then if you come in our backyard, it's like this little secret garden. It's an oasis. It's an oasis. Okay. So once we pull the weeds. Yeah. What do we do with them? What Uh, do you do with uh, them? I can tell you what I do, but what do you do? We have a pile in the alley. Okay. Um, So we actually are very lucky. When you live in a smaller town in Nebraska, you usually just have... All of the old city dumps that have now been consolidated into area landfills Mm -hmm. are usually just used for lawn waste now. Oh, yeah. And um, at least our city lets it compost and uses it. And they collect tree branches to mulch for city use. So we can just go, anybody who lives in town, it's always open. You just drive up and dump. Um, They've got cameras. So, you know, (laughs) we did. There was a little problem with some dumping. Yeah. But... um, it's open to us as residents of the town. That's where we should be taking our weeds. <laughs> uh, what we're actually doing is chucking them over the fence into our pile in the alley that we say, next weekend we're going to take that to the dump. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I do. So I started by putting them in my compost. And then I realized this is a terrible idea. Yeah. And because then all the seeds go into your con, then you start mm-hmm. using your compost. And then you're like, well, I heard all these weeds come from. That's where they came from. Yep. So now I do get lawn bags and I pretty much only use them for weeds. Yeah. So like I can make a pack of 10 last a long time. Mm-hmm. And that's what you can get them in at Costco. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then I they get picked up with my garbage. 
service. Well, we pay for it to right. get paid. I mean, I could take it to the dump myself, but um, that's not such a short trip in Lincoln. It's not. And like you, I tried that for one year, and yeah. I was like, I'm going to take these this weekend. Yeah, and then it never, it never happened. Happens. And so I just pay the monthly yeah. fee for my garbage collector to pick them up. We don't have that option. Yeah. It's on us. But that was my plan originally. When we moved into this house, it came with a compost area. And I was like, we'll compost all our weeds. And then I thought about that a little harder. And I was like, no, we'll compost our grass clippings and our vegetable debris. Mm -hmm. And we will send our weeds to the landfill where it's going to compost hotter. Yeah. Because that's the thing. There are people Mm -hmm. out there who are very, very good at composting and have got their compost systems going and they're getting hot enough to kill that weed seed. And that is excellent. It is not me. You are my dream. (laughs) Someday. Yeah. I've got... A full plate at the moment, Mm -hmm. but that is on my someday garden project to be that good at composting. I was just proud of myself for fixing my compost bin this spring. And I was like, is anything happening in there? It'll be there. (laughs) (laughs) I do use it fully composted or not. That's what I cover the ground around my vegetables with Mm -hmm. is those grass clippings Mm -hmm. um, instead of like straw or something, partly because I feel like. I don't want to pay for what I just, you know, I didn't mow. My husband mowed. I'm not the mower. Uh, I don't want to pay, go pay for what we essentially just mowed. And we're pretty good at keeping, you know, we've got dandelions and stuff in our yard, but we're pretty good at keeping them from going to seed. So I'm not worried about right. just putting down a whole bunch of weed seed into mm-hmm. my vegetables. Mm-hmm. All right. So those are some things you can do. Yeah. Let's talk about a few more weeds yeah. that are prevalent. Um, I want to talk about two different categories. Okay. One, this sedge that is also the spurge of my neighborhood oh, everyone's yeah. trying to get rid of. And I recently learned is not really a sedge. Mm-hmm. And then weed trees. Oh, yeah. We got to talk about weed trees. Okay. Let's do the sedge first. Yeah. Um, some of you have probably guessed we're talking about nut sedge. Um, And the folks who have really struggled with nut sedge in their life thought the Nebraska Statewide Arboretum was out of our ever-living mind for promoting sedges, for fixing all of these garden problems. And there's a reason why we do that. And that's because all of those sedges we love so much uh, are in the genus Carex. And nut sedge is the common name of a terrible, terrible weed that is in the genus Cypress. Not the same plant, guys. And it just pops right up. Everywhere. Everywhere. Although, I'm going to be brutally honest here, Sarah. <laughs> I do have a very similar problem with gray, gray really? sedge. Yes. That's interesting. It, it has overtaken parts of my bloom box okay. garden that I have to, I just had to stay on top of it. Yeah. Once again, pulls very easily yeah. and I let it spread in some places because it's good, but where I don't want it, I got to pull it. And that is probably the case for any seeding plant yeah. in our native gardens that, uh, you know, nature fills a vacuum. Mm-hmm. So it will seed where you don't want it. I would say the difference there, I'm glad it pulls really easy yeah. for you. Nut sedge, uh, it it can pull really easy. However, when you pull it, you actually cause it to aggressively multiply yep. from its roots. Learned that the hard yes. way. <laughs> uh, if anyone actually has a solution to this problem, we would love to hear it. There are sprays, like weed sprays, that cause it to multiply more rather than die. Apparently, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't part of this conversation. I overheard a conversation where somebody was saying they had found the nut sedge killer. And we got to know what this is. If anybody knows what kills nut sedge, we have to send out an agency wide email. Yes. Um, if you pull it at the, I've, so this is interesting. I've heard that it's time of year dependent, that there's times a year you can pull nut sedge and times that you can't. I need somebody to, uh, to tell me if that's true. I don't know. I just I just pull it because it's gone for now. Mm-hmm. And if it comes back later, I'll pull it again, I guess. I mean, fire. I'm pretty stubborn. <laughs> I'll just keep pulling it until it, it goes it's away. too close to my house to light on fire. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it is. So it does have, I'm looking at this now. It has some other common names. 
cocoa grass and java grass. Don't I've never heard it called that. Um, it's probably regional things. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. It is native to Africa, southern and central Europe, and south or, southern Asia. Southern Asia. Southern Asia. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I almost said. I like it. Uh, Let's but change the name. It's got to go here. It's a problem. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say that in the meantime, while we're waiting for the magical phone call, you can find my office phone number on the website. <laughs> Please call me if you know how to get rid of message. I would, at minimum, cut off its seed heads. Yeah. Never let it seed. Yeah. Do, like, can it be out-competed, do you think? Because, and, and I'm asking that because I think it can. I think it can, too. Because there are parts of my garden where it grows heavily, and I don't have any ground cover there. And part of that is because I just haven't been able to get anything established yet. Um, and But then there's other parts that I have excellent ground cover, and it's not there. I think it likes open spaces. I mm-hmm. The only place in my yard I struggle with net sedge is that rock garden of yeah. chaos. I do have a few neighbors who battle it in their yards. Yeah, I don't pay that much attention to the weeds that are in our lawn, um, so I can't tell you if it. I just mow it. Yeah, like if little. it bows often enough to never go to seed, I probably don't even know what's growing in our lawn. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I have heard that that is where it's like really a beast is if you're trying to, especially if you're trying to like seed in new lawn. Yeah. Um. But the only place I struggle with it is those open areas I haven't worked in yet. Um, I don't know. I don't see a ton of it around our neighborhood. So it may just be that where I'm at, we don't have a terrible problem with it. Um, Because like I said, we don't have Creeping Charlie. either. We have Hembit. But I haven't seen any Creeping Charlie issues in my neighborhood either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a beast. If you're struggling with it, we sympathize. And we're sorry we have no magical answer for you. Yeah. Okay, weed trees. Oh, boy. <laughs> what weed trees do you have? Mulberries everywhere. Oh, right. Um, and sumac isn't as bad. Oh, yeah, I don't have sumac. I have a few of those. But the real wa- problem for us is walnut. Oh, really? We have some... Na- have we have any a, walnut well, problems? We have a lot of walnuts in our neighborhood. I have a walnut tree in my yard. Really? Yeah, and I don't have any problems. Well... Um, but you have Creeping Charlie. So well, I have I'll other problems. Walnuts. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think are, and they're not young ones. The young ones aren't a problem. So I think the main reason we're struggling with a lot of these trees is that eight years where no one took care of our yard because mm-hmm. they're all like an inch diameter and will not be killed no matter what I find to put on the fresh cuts. Yeah. Um, and they're too big to dig up. So Mm -hmm. where I just right now I've got all of these mulberry bushes where I just keep cutting it to the ground and cutting it to the ground and cutting it to the ground until the day when I, you know, finally get to that part of my to do list where Mm -hmm. I find something to kill them with. Yeah. Good luck. Thanks. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I have hackberry, which we've talked about. And I think I I think I'm down to two or three that I am still trying to get rid of. I've gotten pretty good at, as I know now, as soon as I spot one, Mm -hmm. it's got to get pulled. Right. Um, Right away. Right away. So I've gotten better at that because I don't know what the actual growth rate of hackberry is, but I swear to you that it will get pretty well established in one season. I believe that. Like like good diameter established. Um, So I have one spot that I I just felt terrible because it like had overtaken this spot in my yard and it looks my neighbor's front door looks right onto it Mm. i was like these poor people have this terrible view and so i that was a project i did this spring is i replanted that spot after cutting it back severely and i just have to go in there every week and cut back any new growth because it'll just re-sprout and re-sprout right and i did girdle part of it so that has stopped and girdling is just where you like disrupt the cambium layer which is the outer layer of the tree 
And so I just like kind of cut all the way around with my saw, but the way it was growing, I couldn't get Get to all of it it all the way. Um, So at least now I'm keeping it lower. Mm -hmm. So that's not as big of a problem. And I've done the same in another spot. And then I also have an elm tree that is causing the same issue. And all three of these, I just can't, they're too big to dig up. So I just keep, like you, cut it back, cut it back, cut it back. I'm great at staying on top of the little ones. Yeah. It's all of these ones I inherited that somebody Mm -hmm. didn't take care of when they were the easy size. Yeah. Yeah. Trees are tough. Um, And I think it's interesting. We get a lot of maple seedlings. Mm -hmm. They go everywhere in our yard. But there's only a few spots where they actually continue to grow i think they get out competed and shaded out pretty quickly yeah um which makes sense i mean that's what would happen in a forest you can't have every single seedling sprout yeah i mean Uh, i get a few oak seedlings too but i just pull them usually the squirrels actually come take those back away yeah yeah (laughs) they do uh i trees seedlings are interesting because even these trees that we've like given the reputation of being slow growers because we dug them up in a yeah. 10 gallon size from a nursery and moved to them when they're planted by their own seeds are not necessarily slow trees. Mm-hmm. Uh, and sometimes you got to be really on top of them. Yeah. Yeah. If you want a hackberry, just come to my yard. <laughs> I can find you a seedling. <laughs> we'll dig uh, it up young. Yeah. We've got a few potted <clears throat> oaks that were just, too nice for my husband to let me kill um so they're in pots if anyone wants one they're probably burr (laughs) all right yeah not not bad um yeah so is there any way to have a garden and not have to weed no i i hear all these people (laughs) sorry (laughs) i just like the ridiculous things that i get from people (laughs) Somebody said to me, like, oh, it's that it's that year again where we got to pull all the mulch and rock up and replace the weed shield and put it all back down. I was like, that is so much work. And then how do you, like, around your plants? Like, I don't understand what's happening here. This is not going to work. Just pull the weeds. Right. I mean, I understand if you are unable to pull like physically unable well if you're physically unable to pull the weeds you're physically unable to replace that weed barrier every three to four years i don't know you have to do it a lot a lot and so um i'm not trying to say that there is there no say it like there's There's no there will always be weeds yeah and there's no i i've never found a weed barrier to work ever not once very temporarily maybe yeah so that's what i That's how I feel. Now, I guess you could spray a lot, and then there wouldn't be weeds. Yeah. Should we talk about why the weed barrier doesn't work? Oh, sure. So, a lot. the most common use I see of this weed barrier is people um, put it down, and then they cover it in river rock or some other rock, which I've let my opinion be known on that. Or mulch. Yeah. I mostly see rock, but some people do do mulch. Mulch is almost worse. Yeah. So then what happens is you've got plants growing, you've got wind blowing, you've got rain, winter. Eventually, there's going to be a silty layer of soil on top of the weed barrier within the rocks where now maybe you stopped the weeds from coming up through it, although there are some weeds that will come right through Mm -hmm. it. Uh, But now you've just like separated these two areas of soil Uh, We'll not even get into the fact that you're really minimizing the water that can absorb into the ground, but you've created like another soil layer on top of the weed shield. So that you're just going to have weed sprout in that. Maybe they'll be a little easier to pull because they're in a shallow area of um, soil, Mm -hmm. but they're still going to be, you didn't get rid of them. And weeds are notorious for growing in very challenging right. conditions. And I've seen some of those that grew on top and then grew their roots down through the paper. Mm-hmm. Um, so that when you pull it, not only pull is it paper. hard, but you've ripped up all your weed <laughs> mm-hmm. shield. Um, then when people mulch on top of it, that process happens even quicker because mm-hmm. mulch is made to decompose in the garden. Mm-hmm. The idea being that it decomposes into the soil and benefits your plants. Right. When you put it on top of landscaping fabric, 
It doesn't have anywhere to go. How about rubber mulch? <laughs> We've already talked about rubber mulch. I can't even. I can't do that today. <laughs> I can't do that today. Uh, um, yeah, so weed shield. Weed it's shield. Not, it's not what you think it is. It's a very temporary solution to one problem while causing others. We're going to stamp that with waste of money. Yes. Um, I've heard... You know, there's a project that we're helping with out in western Nebraska that's got some really, really bad weed problems. And they are going to put a barrier down and put rock on top and put raised beds on top. I'll be interested to see how this goes. I think its most benefit is going to be that it's essentially going to smother everything that's under there for a few years. And then I think they're still going to... I predict it's still going to have to come out at some point. I mean, I think... One of the only good uses for it is if you do intend to have just a bare rock spot where you are going to spray. Right. Then I that's guess a really the only way um, that's going to happen. If you truly want to have less weeds, fill the void. Mm-hmm. Um, nature hates a place where plants could be and there aren't plants. Right. So if you really want to not have to do a lot of weeding work, plant it for nature. Mm-hmm. Um, fill it I don't care what you fill it with fill it with a plant you like that you want that you mm-hmm. want to keep around mm-hmm. and that's how you're going to do less weeding are you gonna do no weeding no no I just shook my head I don't know why I did that this is a podcast <laughs> <laughs> which brings us to we are gonna do some weed treatment trials we are so if you have a weed treatment that you're wondering about you yeah. need to send it in ASAP we got some great started. ideas through Facebook. Mm-hmm. Um, so what we're talking about is like those homemade weed killing mm-hmm. recipes. Yeah, um, don't send us like. Yeah, we you, all. We I can't go by Roundup. <laughs> yeah. We can do that. Um, we. I was gonna say WD forty for some reason. I was like, why do I think that's a weed killer? I don't know. We it can might work. Trial it. <laughs> so I'm gonna get a time lapse camera from our friends of the Forest Service and uh, just kill some parts of my alley. Which are all weeds anyway. And see or maybe not works, kill them. Or maybe not kill them. <laughs> there are definitely some... I told people to send me them whether they knew they worked or not. And there's definitely some on the list that we can just check off, but we'll show you anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some fun ones. Yeah. There's some definitely borderline home science experiment ones uh-huh. out there. Um, yeah. Are you going to do the stale beer one that's going to make your whole alley smell? You're implying that we I can find a stale beer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll break you up. Okay. <laughs> um, I would, I mean, maybe I'll try that down the alley. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, no. yeah. I, I will try it. The neighbor's alley. Yeah. I'll try it. I'll try it. We'll see. Yeah. I'll put it out in the alley. It's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll try some interesting things and see what happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so definitely watch our social media pages mm-hmm. for those it'll take us a little bit i'm gonna start it here like next week but it'll take a couple weeks mm-hmm. of filming yeah so since we can't not weed that i mean if you are choosing to embrace the world of gardening weeding is a part of that and i find it relaxing at i times. do too that's what i wanted to talk about was how can we you know there's always going to be those big pushes if you have to do three days of weeding it's probably not going to be fun well yeah that was a chore that was but... a chore clean it cleaning up of um areas that haven't been cared for is always going to be a chore but just your average everyday weeding it doesn't have to be man i like to go on a day like today like like you said today would have been perfect uh-huh. go outside for 20 minutes in the morning with my coffee yep. and a podcast usually and just pull the weeds out of the freshly wet ground Mm -hmm. it's so satisfying it is right after it rains or after you watered Mm -hmm. they're easy to pull Um, if you're doing it regularly you're never going to be pulling anything too monstrous right Um, and yeah just try to have that that thought that this is just some time in my garden i'm gonna look for bugs and see what's blooming and pull these weeds um and try to, you know, reframe it, I guess, is what I'm saying. Because I don't actually mind weeding most of the time. I find it a great chance to be, like, in touching my plants and seeing how they're doing mm-hmm. and um, learning about them. Yeah. 
and learning about what's working in my garden. I was weeding a little bit the other day and found out that I forgot I had planted something. <laughs> oh, that's always a happy surprise. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, I yeah. did plant some of that there. I did pull a plant on accident oh, the other day, a brand new yeah. one. I was just pulling, 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 and then all of a sudden that goldenrod's done for. And I tried to put it back in, and it didn't work. Oh, <laughs> I did that. I pulled a sage that I'd been so excited to plant, and then it got covered by that bed straw. Yeah. And because it was freshly planted, it popped right out. Oh, but yeah. I just popped it back in. It seems okay. It's dead. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You had a hot weekend for that, though. This was yeah. Mine was earlier this spring. It wasn't so bad. Uh, I like to listen to stuff while mm-hmm. I weed. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I just like to listen to the outdoors. Mm-hmm. Uh, I listen to podcasts and audiobooks. Mm-hmm. I like to, my secret is I like to hide my earbuds under my hair so that my husband comes out and tries to talk to me and doesn't, can't figure out why I'm ignoring him. (laughs) If you're in my house, you just assume that we have earbuds in. Like, it's maybe weird, but we have earbuds in all the time. I usually only do one so I can hear Silas at the same time. Well, yeah. uh, Yeah. yeah. And also because I have an old phone and it won't connect to both my earbuds. Oh, no. It's fine. It's actually kind of better. I'm more aware of my surroundings (laughs) i don't want to be totally blocked out from the garden i just want a little background company yeah Uh uh-huh all right i have one more question for you what's the weirdest weed you've found and it can be something i can start if you want Okay, you start i might have to think about this i was as i was doing my 15 hours of weeding i in my shadiest part of my yard just like full shade all the time i found a tomato plant (laughs) Like, what are you doing here? I don't know how it got. I mean, clearly, a wildlife yeah, took it there. Moved it. I was like, it looked great. I don't. Know. That's really surprising in the shade. I got nothing. I don't know. We have um, spring greens mm-hmm. coming up all over our yard because I thought I was being this wonderful rabbit mom. Yeah, and planted her a browsing garden. I yeah. just got like one of those spring green seed mixes mm-hmm. and bombgars and. I planted it. We put a little cage over it. It was lovely. Well, she doesn't like to get dirty. (laughs) Which is the best part of your rabbit. (laughs) So we took her out there and she just like hopped around a little bit and then just incessantly took baths. Like my paws are dirty. I can't. Yeah. But if you cut the greens and give them to her, she loved them. Of course. But I I wasn't on top of that and they all went to seed. Mm -hmm. So now we've got beets and arugula and mustard greens all over our yard oh yeah it's fine i don't really worry about them i pull them if i see them yeah yeah i have i do have some green leaf lettuce growing in my yard that i just mow nah, i mean it's fine <laughs> what what's it gonna do yeah I, <laughs> some happy little bunny will hop by and eat it one day oh no Mm-mm. oh yeah you have a dog no yeah. i have a severe rabbit problem oh. this year and that is a battle i am losing and we can talk about that yeah, another that's, time we do need to talk about that rabbits and deer i don't know what my dog's doing honestly i think helping them i'm not sure <laughs> helping them cross the street to get to your yard apparently i need to find a fox i want a fox and a hawk in my yard <laughs> two things i would enjoy i don't know how you acquire those legally sorry i don't either i just like i'm trying to sing to them like come here <laughs> Do you have any friends who are like bird, I bird don't. hunters? I don't. Oh, like, like you know the who, falcon. Yes, right? like the, that's what I was yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Um, no, oh. I don't. Well, Isn't that, maybe I, you should meet one. I should just bring him because you know Matthew's super afraid of snakes. And oh. I was like, if we had, if had a, hawk, ha- a hawk, you wouldn't have snakes. We would not have a snake problem. And by problem, I mean it is like need- we have so many snakes. I swear hmm. they just flock to him. <laughs> That's, knowing he hates them. I think considering you have a not small dog living in your yard, your wildlife problems are kind of amusing. Uh, he it just, he's, I don't know. I think I've made my pets too zen. They're just, they, they don't fear anything. Yeah. Like my cat watched a mouse eat its food and then just looked <laughs> at me like, you'll restock, right? <laughs> like, I think they're just like, pets are fun here. These, yeah. this is, you have a tortoise. It's a refuge. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, that's it. You should get your rehabilitation license and you could have a hawk around. That's not a bad idea. 
Anyways. <laughs> Anyways. Um, real quick before we finish, yeah. any weeding tools that you love? My hands. Yeah. <laughs> I I have a whole shed of tools. I mean I don't remember to get them. No. I occasionally, depending on the weed, I'll use just like a shovel spade. Yeah. Or something, especially when it's a really big area and I just dig up the whole mm-hmm. But usually I just pull with my hands. That's mostly what I do. I do have one of those just like stick dandelion diggers with the little forked end Uh that I really like. But I have a stick obsessed child Mm -hmm. who wants it. And so I've just stopped getting it out because he'll come take it out of my pocket and it's gone. Yeah. And it's dangerous. And I would say know your weeds so that you know which ones to wear gloves with. Yes. Yes, especially if you have the weed of death mm-hmm. or the vine yep. of death. I do. Yeah. I did buy one of those. It's like a dandelion digger on a five foot pole. I've heard really good things yes. about those. I well, I didn't end up getting to use it much because Nick saw the chance to go, <laughs> go for his dandelion, and he loved it. Yeah, it, as long as the soil wasn't too dry it just popped him right out of the ground. All right. And yeah. It, it saved him bending over and crawling around the yard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, I think we should change up our plant of the week question. Okay. I want to hear what's blooming in your garden. Ooh, what is blooming? Well, right now, the main thing that's blooming, I feel like we're kind of in between bloom seasons. Yeah, we're <laughs> kind of like in the, the summer lull. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but what is blooming prolifically right now is my mountain mint. Uh, yeah. It's really going. But my um, Joe Pie... And my, oh, I, I think it's a, is it a Rudbeckia I have? That really tall one, like six feet tall. Oh, yeah, yeah, probably. Those are both about to burst. Ooh. Like, I can, it's coming. And I was so worried about that rain last night because last year, my Rudbeckia, when it was young, we had the, the, a couple weeks of, like, heavy rains. And it flopped over. And oh, it no. did bloom, but it never stood up. And so I was excited because this year it's all the way up. And I noticed after last night, it's kind of flopping again. And I was like, no, stay no, stay tall. Tie it to That's, something. I'm going to have to yeah. today, I think. Uh, so mostly my mountain mint. What's blooming in yours? Mostly mountain mint. Yeah. Uh, purple cone flower is still going strong. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, my big blue stem just put its first mm. flower out. I'm so excited. I love big blue stems flowers. Let's see. I've got a balloon flower blooming. Oh, yeah. That was my unidentified plant. I don't know if I mentioned that on the podcast. (laughs) I took home a plant from the greenhouse last fall that we couldn't identify. And Bob was like, here, just plant this somewhere. And I did. Couldn't figure out what it was. It finally bloomed. It's a balloon flower. I love those. so fun. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's, you're right. We're kind of in the lull. I've got some liatris about to go. Yep. Same. I've got some ironweed about to go. Mm Mm-hmm. But... It's pretty quiet right now. My ironweed is struggling, so we'll see. Yeah. We'll see how it does. Um, Oh, my butterfly milkweed's blooming. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there are some liatris here on campus that are blooming. So, I mean, different bloom seasons for different types. I think I have spicata and Mm -hmm. also Lincoln's always warmer than the smaller Mm -hmm. towns. And so Mm -hmm. everything blooms like a few days earlier. Yeah. Which I think is interesting. Uh, I mean, I drive 30 minutes to work. It's not like I have a terribly long commute, but it will be a little different because it's hotter in the city. My, actually, now that I think about it, my Missouri primrose is still Uh, blooming. Okay. It's been blooming for weeks. That's awesome. Yeah. I just planted some this spring, so it didn't bloom this year. And my betony just finished blooming. My stone crop is still blooming. Oh, I have a phlox that's blooming. Mm -hmm. We did buy it blooming, so that might be kind of (laughs) cheating. I have another, I have an unidentified grass blooming. It's like a blue-gray spiky grass. It's really cool. Let's let's just call it that. Yeah. I (laughs) bought it at Spring Affair and for promptly forgot what it was called well of course my gray sedge is yeah always always blooming (laughs) i am very i'm gonna have to ask some other people how that's doing for them yeah it definitely it's got a seed head that looks like it could do some do some moving around Mm -hmm. we'll see yeah well we did it we kept it to an hour yay yay we've been bad about that before yeah especially when it's something we feel passionately about like weeds and it's just, it's a big part of 
the gardening life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, definitely send us your questions, especially if they're about weeds and any home remedies you have for weeds. Send them soon because we're Sarah's going to start those trials. I say we. I don't do any of this work. <laughs> Sarah does it. So I'm going to give credit where credit's due. So send all of those in. And don't forget to rate and review us. We appreciate those of you who have already done it. We have a few. So that's great. You guys have left the kindest reviews on iTunes. Yes. You just melted us when we read them. Thank you. Yes, it was very nice. So keep those coming. In. we love it um and like i said send us your questions because we would love to do another questions episode soon mm -hmm. so send those our way and it's prime gardening season it so is. get your questions answered people all right well thank you for listening bloom box and bloom box growing deeper are both programs of the nebraska statewide arboretum mm -hmm.